1965 VW Sedan Restoration Part 8. I wanted a 1965 tag to go on this bug, but I didn't want just any old tag. I had sold my car when I got out of the Air Force in 1965, so I didn't have a, a tag, and the only tag I could think of was the tag that my dad had. My dad was in the North Carolina House of Representatives two terms, and his seat in the House was 177. So I had this plate made by a company that specializes in making any year, any color plates. So now I have a 1965 plate that I can identify with. The headliner bow pockets had to be snipped back just a little bit to allow for a smooth transition on both sides. I started installing this headliner at the front and you want to make sure that this piece is perfectly centered. Installing the headliner takes a lot of patience and time. Chris Ballone at Classic VWs knew that this had to be done but Nobody else could tell me. TMI couldn't answer the question. There are no good videos out there on the three-piece headliner for the 65. Maybe Chris Ballone will make one. If you will watch Chris Ballone's videos on headliner installation, even though it won't be for the 65 and for the three-piece, it'll still help you. These binder clips are available in several different sizes at Walmart, Staples, other office supply places. And you'll need quite a few, and these clothespins come in handy for tight places. When you apply the glue to both pieces that you're going to glue together, or the metal to the vinyl, let it dry for about two minutes. Then press the two pieces together. Now, I found out that this glue can be removed, pieces can be removed, up to about two hours with no problem. And maybe even longer than that. But the thing is, that if you need to re-glue, just be sure that you don't have any wads of glue under the pieces you're gluing. And you can use 3M uh, adhesive remover to remove any glue that you have even after it's dried. Now before it dries, on paint you can use WD-40 and that'll take it off. Don't use it on your vinyl though. You don't want to interfere with the uh, adhesion, so don't put the WD-40 on the vinyl where you're going to use glue. Use newspaper and masking tape around areas, uh, especially your paint, where you don't want the glue to go. Although that nozzle works very well on that uh, 3M90 adhesive, it's still easy to shoot it on your paint if you're not careful. And you need to have a good hair dryer, not a heat gun. A heat gun will melt this vinyl. Use a hair dryer, keep it close by throughout this whole process because you'll need it to pull some areas tight and straighten out wrinkles. And like I say, don't let the time factor stress you out because you can go back. You can pull this loose and re-glue it a lot of times without glue. Using the same glue, it'll still stay tacky enough to do what you need to do. Areas like underneath the window here, that's uh, just bare metal. Of course, no padding underneath that. And so that metal needs to be extremely clean of any rust or old glue. Just turn the edges over, quarter inch, half inch, to make a smooth edge on both ends of this little panel. The way the light hits on this Panama beige can really play tricks, uh, like this hood hinge. It looks a lot darker. It looks like it doesn't match the car at all, but it's a perfect match. But I was so worried about the paint matching throughout this whole process, especially since I was shooting doors and hoods and you know, at, at separate times. So I had to actually take the parts out into the sunlight and roll the car out into the sunlight to make sure that the paint matched. And it did. This headliner takes so much time. I bet I had two days in it. But that's what you need to do. Take your time. Make sure you do it right. 
Now I cannot stress this enough. Make your cuts, especially around these quarter windows, just a little at a time. Stretch it out to see how it's going to fit. Then cut a little bit more if you need to, but it's so easy to overcut this. And there is no way to patch it to where it won't show. You will have ruined a headliner. You won't find all the knobs you need at one supplier. And there's a good chance that they won't match if you get them from a different supplier. So I ended up sending mine back and just painting mine. Here I'm putting the front axle tube assembly back in and being extremely careful not to hurt the paint. My son helped me do this. You really need to have help doing it. And now I'm putting the steering box and the tie rods and the steering dampener and everything back in. This engine test stand is made to fit on my engine hoist. And it also has four casters where it will roll around on its own. You don't have to bolt this engine down. It'll sit there and run just fine without being bolted. Like I said, on the vinyl, you can use the 3M adhesive remover. And it won't hurt a thing. Uh, you can use the WD-40 before the glue hardens. You will have to use a small punch to find the holes once you have the headliner glued over it. This Volkswagen Club is up north. I emailed them, but they never responded to my email. I'll try again later. These Eclipse are a little hard to get to. Just make sure you don't scratch your chrome. I smoothed out these dents to where they're not all that noticeable. I'd like to have new pop-out windows. Once that dent smoothed out, you can use uh, wet or dry paper 220 to start with and work your way down to uh, 360 or so. And final sand with uh, 400 wet paper and then you can polish it out. The pinch welt, as it's called, is pushes in around this quarter window. You don't have to glue it. It just pushes in real tightly. I removed this pinch welt later to remove some headliner wrinkles. You can do that. No problem. Just pull it off and press it back on. And this is my Harbor Freight bubble balancer that I'll have to make an adapter for because it's set up for a two-inch hole center wheel. Not these old style wheels as shown here. And because this tire is only available from Coker Tire, I had to pay through the nose for it. And here I'm using this plastic tool with a binder clamp to just spread out the pressure. Try to line up your panel clips before you start installing the panel. And then with a Q-tip lubricated with WD-40, lubricate your little seals, your retaining seals. I have new seals for these pop-out windows, but these were in good shape, so I just used those. These new latches were from J-Bugs, I believe. There was some old paint some old overspray on these window seals, but a little bit of lacquer thinner will take that off. And the new hinge covers, and I believe they were from J-Bugs too. And as you see here, you can turn a, a clothespin around to use it for pressure as well as clamping. And everything worked out real good with this uh, pedal mount that I made. All the linkage works fine. As you know, a horn has an adjustment screw on the back of it, and I had to adjust this one to get it to blow properly. I sprayed both the body pan and the carpet about an inch away from this strip, and then just tucked the edge of the carpet into the strip and pressed down. I trimmed this edge off of this carpet because my carpet retaining strip 
would have had to have been bent up quite a bit to accommodate that. And gluing the side panels in, the kick panels. I never used these footrest panels on all of my bugs, but of course, this being a restoration, I did want to use it. This is just regular carpet padding from Lowe's. Just lightly glued to the floor enough to keep it from moving around and then the carpet on top of it is just lightly glued too. You'll need to test fit your carpet over this padding to make sure that you have the padding in the right position and you may or may not be able to use padding across your tunnel. This is a good example how light plays tricks with this Panama beige paint. When I had finished my paint, I used a Meguiar's clay bar kit. You can use the clay bar kit over freshly painted paint as long as it's been dry for about two days. This clay bar kit does wonders for removing overspray. I won't wax this car for about three months because it's still putting off vapors. You can still smell it. Using wax can trap those vapors and cause that paint to lift in some extreme cases. On a 65 horn, you'll have current to the horn at all times and the other side grounds through your horn ring. When I put these tail lights on here to test to see if they matched, the lighting plays such tricks that it looked like they didn't match at all, but they did. I wanted to use a battery cutoff switch not only for theft but also for safety. Don't forget to paint your seat frames before you put your carpet down. This deluxe carpet made by TMI is really great. I like the grommets. They're very accurate where they're located. After painting, all the threads need to be cleaned. The running board threads, the fender bolt threads, these uh, drum threads. This engine was such a close fit. That rear engine seal, uh, part of it goes above the tin and part below, and that was really hard to get right. Here is something you need to be aware of. Uh, first time it's ever happened to me, but I'm not going to let it happen again. I ordered this Wolfsburg window rubber and we tried to install the windshield and lacked about three inches and pop crack right down through the center. Tried a second windshield, exact same thing, lacked three inches, pop goes the windshield. So I knew something was wrong because I put in at least five or six windshields with no problem, never broke one. Back in the 80s we used West Coast Metric so I ordered window rubber from them for the front windshield. Then I put the windshield in with no problem at all using this uh, West Coast metric rubber. Save your old rubber if you can and compare it with the new. It might save you a real headache. So I'm out about 140 bucks and uh, Wolfsburg wouldn't do anything about this. Wouldn't even take the rubber back even though it's obviously defective. Maybe you can see here that this window rubber from uh, Wolfsburg is about three sixteenths of an inch too big. And it was marked right. It was the correct part, but the supplier evidently made this rubber too big for whatever reason. So just be aware this can happen. I discussed previously how you could balance your wheels using just simple tools. But one thing I didn't mention is that you need to clean your wheel really good where this tape weight goes or it won't stick. Having guide studs like this makes changing the wheel and tire so much easier. I cut a slot in them to make them easier to remove. I don't know if they make a, an adapter to fit the face of that wheel where you can spin balance them or not. But since this paint was perfect, I didn't want an adapter clamped onto the face of that wheel and no weights on the face of the wheel too, of course. My deluxe carpet was so thick I had to do this a little bit differently here. And if you're not careful and tape your screws, you'll get these little threads caught in your screw and it'll pull a thread all the way out of your carpet. 
Maybe you already know that. Maybe it's happened to you, but tape your screws and that won't happen. Once you have found one hole here, it'll be easier to find the others. A little glue and carpet fiber on top of these screws and you won't even be able to see them. You can buy this fuel tank gasket, but I used a weather strip, foam weather strip from Lowe's. That worked just great. When you get fuel in this tank and the weight increases, you'll have to go back around and tighten these four bolts. This is one way I was going to do that battery cutoff switch with a cable, then I changed my mind. And wiring the headlights, uh, soldering, and using shrink tubing. You won't regret making your grounds really solid. A star washer under this uh, terminal ensures uh, good ground by biting into the metal. And of course I'm going to leave these fenders loose because I'm going to paint that fender beading and install that. And I'm really happy with the way the headlights turned out. Before you install your trim clips into the trim, position your trim over the trim holes. More than likely you're going to find that you're going to have to slightly bend that molding to make it contour with the body. And it's better to find that out now than to have to take the trim back off again and bend it. As I said earlier, if you'll take a Q-tip and wet it with WD-40 and lube your little seals that these clips slide in, it makes them go in so much easier. Should you have to pull these trim clips back out, use one of the plastic tools shown in this video. When you're ready to install your trim, make sure that your clips line up with each hole. Start them in the hole slightly and then use the palm of your hand to carefully press the trim in. And of course the trim seals seal out water as well as holding that trim clip. One thing I wish I'd have known, that trunk liner, cardboard trunk liner, goes in so much easier with the hood hinges not installed. I bought the locking latch for the engine hood. The previous owner had just put these new exhaust tips on the car so I didn't have to buy them. I wish I had thought about pre-fitting that molding before I put it on. I had to pop it back off and bend it slightly. And it's all starting to come together now. When I first bought this car, I had so much trouble getting a good ground for these tail lights. That's the reason that I ran an extra ground wire. That'll save you a lot of grief. And as I mentioned previously, you may have to trim those little clips that hold your molding on the glove box door to get them into the glove box door holes. And all the trim on the front hood. All this trim is new even though my handle was in fair shape. And you see my additional ground wire here. Do this. You won't regret it. On a car that isn't a show car, I think I would just tape these wires with uh, scotch electrical tape which is 3M by the way. But this uh, wiring loom tends to catch water and dirt, but this car will never be driven in the rain again. And testing all the lights here, and yeah, all of them seem to work just fine. Once upon a time you could buy this fender beading in Panama Beige, but Wolfsburg had just lost their supplier, so I had to paint mine. First you scuff that new fender beading with a Scotch-Brite pad. Then you clean it with wax and grease remover. Then you spray it with PPG Adhesion Promoter. Then after 30 minutes you paint it with the PPG Panama Beige Acrylic Enamel with a flex agent added to it. Two coats of acrylic enamel and you're all set. Headlights and parking lights tested. They work just fine. The reason for two holes in each end of this fender beading is so that that fender beading won't twist. And I'll say it again, you have to use a flex agent in that paint. 
For whatever reason, my luck I guess, these uh, running board holes did not line up perfectly. So I had to drill new ones about a half of an inch away. I wanted to protect that running board trim until this car was completely finished and out of the shop. And this photo of course shows the way the bumper support tubes should be mounted to the bumper. And this is the correct position for the bumper bracket grommets. And in case you've forgotten, this is the way the bumper bracket mounts. And another view of that slightly curved edge goes to the outside. These bumper support tubes are real tight fit through that grommet, so you need to lubricate them and do it from the inside, not from the outside. And on a show car, I wanted every bolt that wasn't painted from factory to be new. Don't tighten any of these bolts that hold the bumper on and the bumper support tube bolts. Don't tighten any of them until you've got the whole bumper assembly ready. The rear bumper had just been replaced when I bought this car and I bought the front bumper. So all the hardware was new. And these bumper support tubes do have a flat side to show you the way they go here. Now my bug was drilled for the inner seat belts, the inboard seat belts, but not for the outboard seat belts on the rear. So this is one possible location that could have been used. When all this was loosely bolted together, all the bumper parts bolted together, then I tightened them up, making sure that the guide tubes fit the grommets right. You may have to modify that a little bit to make sure they come through the grommets right. These aftermarket bumpers uh, don't have near the quality of chrome as the original, of course, so they need to be kept waxed and treat the bolts with WD-40 from time to time. The silver paint on these new bumpers, on the back side of the bumper, is very poor quality and a lot of it flaked off and I had to touch it up. So in the future I'm sure that I'll have to pull these bumpers back off and paint the back sides with really good paint. So I decided to use one of the body mount bolts for the outboard seat belt bolt. And my luck, it broke off. And then the worst thing that could happen did happen when I started to drill that broken bolt out. The drill bit broke. But I was lucky because that drill bit, when it broke, just the tip of it was sticking out through the other side of that bolt. So I was able to take a very thin punch and drive that broken bit right on out of the end of that bolt. Then I was able to drill that bolt out using larger and larger drill bits till I got to the right side. And then all that was left was so thin that the heat and the thinness let it come right out. Lots of rust around that hole, so I cleaned it real good and, and put some rust oleum around it. Lots of paint still in the air here, you can see it. And now the doors are finished. Thanks for watching my videos, and if you have any questions, just please private message me.